to Better Together, Two Girls in a Bible with Alexis V. Wolf and Sandy Renner. I am Alexis V. Wolf of the Fire Restore Global Ministries. Like Sandy, I am a published author and minister, counselor, I don't know, we do all kind of stuff. You can reach me at www.thefirysore.com or you can go to Amazon.com to find uh, my author's page and all my books are there. And I am Sandy Renner, of course, and you can find me at sandyrenner.net for my website. Mm -hmm. We're excited to be with you today. Yes, Thank we you are. For tuning in. Yes, we are. And we are Better, Better together. together. And we really want to help the body of Christ understand that we are collectively, Sandy. Better Together. You know, there are a lot of shows out there, Sandy, called Better Together, but yes. we are Better Together, Two Girls in a Bible, and we, we want to encourage people to, one, understand what it is to not be isolated, that we need to come together and yes. be better together. God designed us to function together, to function properly we are relational in unity. Beings. Yes, absolutely. And so, uh, and we want to encourage you to get your Bibles. I don't yes. care if you Google it, if you have a hard copy, get the Word of God. We want to inspire you to really tap into this to understand that this is the living word. I mean, it's not a, a check, check. It's not an old dead do, scroll. Don't do, don't no, do. it is the living word. How and, about that? And we purpose to bring the living word into everyday life. So if you've just tuned in, you've never seen us before, that is our goal. That's to it. make the word of God applicable to everyday life. Absolutely. All right, Sandy. So last week, I do believe we finished with Matthew 6. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. Um, and we brought up some points. Well, you read it, and then I kind of had this epiphany. Now, you and I yeah. have been teaching on the mind a very long time. I've yes. written about it in multiple places and you know different perspectives of that, and you have as well. But when Sandy read Matthew 6, verse 25, it is through 34, but I'm going to pick out these two sentences, two sentences that really struck me last week. And if you missed last week's show or any of our episodes and you want to see them, please go to our YouTube channel, Sandy Runner or Alexis V. Wolf of the Fire Sword. Look it up. We'll come up. Um, and that, but we're, we're picking up where we left off last week. Yes. So in Matthew 6, it's it starts with the section that you read. It started with, Verse 25, it says, Therefore I say unto you. Now, let me just note, this is the King James Version. Yes. When you go to the NASB or any of the other versions, they don't read quite like this, but I love this KJV version because it's actually to be clearer. It says, Take no thought for your life. Well, then we know that it goes on and talks about the lilies of the field and how the Lord has dressed them and why do we care about what we will eat and what we will drink. And then it goes down to verse 33 that says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto you. But what I had missed was then it goes on to say, Take therefore, this is verse 34 of Matthew 6, Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. And you brought that up last week. You said it starts with, take no thought for your life, and it ends with, take, take no, no thought, thought for, for tomorrow. tomorrow. And I love that because I thought, you know, as many times, Sandy, as I've taught that and um, expanded upon that. I mean, a, a thousand different angles. Now I've got a new angle. Yes. So we are going to continue talking about the mind for probably several weeks because we really live in a day and age. We always have, but right now we're seeing people losing hope because their minds are so bogged down with self. What about me? What about my family? And what about my family in, in uh, correlation to me? Yes. And me, me, me. We really get our thought. So this word says, take no thought for your life, and two, take no thought for tomorrow. That's about the mind. Why yes, does that not is. hit me until now? I'm a little slow sometimes, Sandy. I'm but this is about word. the mind. It's, it is. It's not that we don't think about ourselves. You know, when I get up in the morning, I think about how my hair looks and my face and my clothes and where I'm going and what's appropriate to, to wear. I mean, Absolutely. I wear pajamas to bed, and I wear, you know, casual dress here but if we're going to a ball we put on a ball gown if we're going to go farm we put on our overalls and so we must think about ourselves if someone's coming to your home you want it to be clean and in order right those things are not what we're talking about yeah because that shows a spirit of excellence not a perfection but a spirit of excellence and since we we are in the image of the creator we want to serve everything we do with the spirit of excellence. absolutely so those things are not wrong. Those things are actually in very much order. I mean, God likes order. God likes his 
Look at the beauty of this earth. So God obviously likes things to look beautiful yes, and in order and, and pleasing to the mm -hmm. eye. So those things are not wrong, and that's not what we're really talking about. So what, do you want to go ahead? No, go ahead. So what we are talking about is when it says take no thought for tomorrow, and we do plan. As, as far as tomorrow goes, we plan. I mean, it, it's, it's wise to be frugal with our money and prepare for the, the lean times. But that's actually not what it's talking about either, is no. it? It's talking about being obsessed. When yes. my mind is obsessed with self. For me, me, me. Same me, thing. Me. Yep. So when our minds are constantly thinking, Say it. What about me? What about me? What about me? What about, what me? about me? That's a Joyce Meyer quote, but we it love it Joyce so much. Meyer. What about me? What about <laughs> but me? But it's accurate because we just become consumed with what do they think of me? Mm. And what do I do to make them think differently of me? And and that could be good also. We want to put forth our, our good foot. We want to live our lives in a way that is uh, God honoring. But when I'm doing it because I want someone else to think well of me, I'm only thinking Self about myself. Serving. My thought is only on my life. Well, think of it this way. Everything we do should be bringing glory to God. Uh, yeah. So if I want to live an excellent life, look my best, put my best foot forward, so to speak, have everything in good working order and look as well as it can, that shows the glory of God. Because you ask me, why did you go to all this trouble? Because God is an excellent God, and we want to serve Him with excellence. Yeah. And we should be able to pull people to Christ. If I'm looking dumpy and lumpy and whatever else, and my house is a stinking mess, what am I going to draw you to? Because one, you're not going to want to even come into my presence. It's a turnoff. Mm -hmm. So how am I going to tell you about this excellent God that wants to put us in such order? You know, like it or not, what we project is what either draws people or just kind of well, we are the physical representation of Christ. Of Christ. So how yes, we, we are. and it, as much as we hate it, because we understand the spirit is it should be our focal point. However, the average person is going to look at my flesh, her flesh first. So it's the external that they see, generally speaking, before they see the spirit of the living God That's in right. our actions. And so, I, you know, growing up in the church. Um, and I've, I've said this before, but like we couldn't wear pants. A lot of the women couldn't wear makeup or they felt they shouldn't wear makeup. I don't know that there was like a, a specific mandate. Some churches right. do have the mandate. Yes, I grew up um, in a church. And so I, I would see a lot of these kind of, and I, I don't want to insult anyone. I'm just telling you from my child's perspective, I, I would look at some of these frumpy, dumpy women and I just thought, is that, is that how I'm supposed to look? They like would be in up? their 30s and look 60. Yeah. So I, I didn't understand that. So when I grew up, and of course after I went through my rebellion, when I came back to Christ, there were still a lot, and there still are, people who believe that. I see it differently. And thank okay. God we can have our own perspective. Uh, because it says, you know, um, what's, what's the scripture about the braiding of the hair? Um, a woman's oh, beauty and, is... Uh, a Peter or a Timothy, I forget those means. It just left my brain. But anyway. Don't, don't, don't put on such adornment and all these things. And... We don't want to ever distract from who Christ is. We're not trying to override him. We're not trying to outshine him. Yeah, so but so the thing is, and so a lot of I think a lot of people take that overboard. They do. Like they can't ha they cannot look attractive, especially for women that we are not supposed to look attractive and I think that's really uh, I, I've actually had pe when I was younger, I have would have young women drawn to me actually drawn to Christ because they said I didn't know you could look good and serve Christ mm -hmm. honestly I had people say Same. that and so if someone doesn't want to wear makeup that's fine I mean that's their business but when we try to put that mandate so we're not saying you can't think about yourself because I said it I think last week or the week before when I get up I do the best I can with what I have and listen on days I don't have to wear makeup I do not wear makeup I put yeah. my hair in a floppy bun and I don't care but if, if I'm going out somewhere and I'm going to represent Christ, because we represent Christ right. everywhere we go, I do my best. It's like I make sure, I, you know, I'm not looking, you know, makeup dripping down my face or I haven't washed my face or my hair. I want to look nice. And then I don't think about it anymore that day. Well, Jesus okay, just, told the Pharisees, don't go around with a sad face showing right. people that you're fasting and you're in prayer. And Lord, if you come to the door and say, what's the matter? I've just been in fasting and prayer before the Lord. <laughs> I'm going, okay, could you take five seconds, calm your hair, brush your teeth, 
just saying. Okay, I so think we, 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 we got our point out there. All right, okay? so take no thought for to, to, for yourself means not being consumed with constantly with thinking you. about self. And we'll talk about tomorrow probably as we go along. Uh, but just FYI, I, I, I made the comment the other day that um, our, I've always said our biggest enemy is self. But I, I'm going to add to that. Our biggest enemy is self and tomorrow. Yes. The worry that we put, put into, into tomorrow. what may never come. The what is. I call it the Could what Could you go is. ahead with that? I, I call it the what is. Oh, my gosh. What if tomorrow I don't have my car payment? What if tomorrow that spigot breaks again? What if tomorrow I come down with COVID? What if tomorrow... You are barring in trouble for a day that's not even here yet. Probably none of those things happen. And if it does, okay, then you deal with that tomorrow. Uh huh. And what, because what it says right here, tomorrow shape, this is the KJV, uh, tomorrow will take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. In other words, there's enough problems for today. We don't need that's to deal with right. tomorrow. You don't need to go there. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, so when we get so consumed, I, I used to say it a little bit differently. Uh, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, mm -hmm. we get stuck in yesterday's mess ups, yesterday's failures, yesterday's pain. We get caught up in that. We can't be free to pursue the future. That's kind of that. What I used to be that we what spoke I about used several to be. weeks yes. ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, today. Oh, God, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do today. I, I mean, really, Christians say this all the time. I don't know what I'm supposed to do today. Do you think the Lord wants me to go to the hospital and pray for people? How does it, Sandy, all the years you've done this, how do you do this? I say, well, first I get out of the bed. I mean, that's just a no-brainer. And uh, I think, what what is my immediate agenda? What do I have right before me? Now, if God wants me to go to the hospital to pray over someone, He's going to let me know that through either natural means or supernatural mm -hmm. means. But until that happens, I have life before me. So if I spend my whole day not hearing the big hello from God, I still have a mandate Yes. to care for my home, to care for the ministry at hand, like this morning, okay, I had to cook breakfast and uh, prepare lunch and do some things at home. I went and checked on my mother-in-law and we had already set a time at one o'clock today to uh, start doing some recordings. So my mandate was to do those things before me so I could come here and do what we're doing right now. Well is that not very spiritual? I hope it is for your sake. But what if we said well, that's not really, really spiritual right now. There's people out there dying, okay? If God gives me a go-ahead to do something about that, let's go do it. But until then, let's do what is right before me. We take too much on and worry about tomorrow, trying to live tomorrow out today. Yeah, I always tell my friend Pam. Hi, Pam. You know, the Pam. family always talk. One day we're going to have Pam on because we, we talk should. about her all the time. Yes. <laughs> but she's our ministry partner and dear, dear friend. Anyway, so years ago when she would fret and fret and fret and fret, and she would tell you this if she were sitting right yes, here, she but would. just lots of fretting. And and I was just said to her, I was like, Pam, pick a path. Pick a path. And God will direct you once you get on that path. But get up and do something. And to this day, that's probably been 10, 15 years ago. And she said, even to this, just the other day, she's like, to this day, I remember that. When I start to kind of get bogged down, I remember Pick a path that, that seems right. I don't mean pick a bad path. I'm saying, but pick a path, a simple path, and go in that direction until God redirects you. Different. And he will direct you because she listens to God. She can hear from God. And, and so, you know, just getting up. Stop stressing about, should I do this, this, this? Just pick one. Just pick one. And go. And God will it, make up your he bed. He will let you know. Make up your bed. Making up your bed in the morning really kind of sets something in order for it's the It sets a tone. It sets a tone. Let's look at this scripture a minute. Matthew 6, 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. He goes on to say, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. What Which of you, by taking one thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? In other words, all that worry is not going to add one 
positive thing into your life, mm -hmm. actually it subtracts. It from does it. subtract. Stress kills, folks. Mm -hmm. God never puts so much on us that it stresses us. If it is, it's not God. I'm sorry if I bust your bubble. Um, How dare you? We put too much on our own plate. And so what, what is the writer talking about? What is Matthew talking about? I'm not so worried about what we're going to eat today. I'm not going to... That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about you are concerned about all these things. And if you continue reading, it gets to the point in verse 33 and says, But seek ye first the kingdom mm -hmm. of God mm -hmm. and his righteousness. And all these things, he's, he's, he's referring to, I don't know if I have enough money for groceries. Mm -hmm. You be about the Father's business. Submit that need to him. Thank him for it. And trust him to provide for you. Now, if you took your grocery money and went shopping at Walmart to buy all the crafty stuff, you might want to repent of mishandling the funds that you had for your groceries. Right. That's not and get some things steward. in order. So that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about worry, 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 worry. It will not add anything to your life, but it most definitely will take from your life. One, you're so stressed out about what you should do, you end up usually not doing, doing nothing. Nothing. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you've spent three hours trying to figure yeah. it out, and you go back and think, you know what? I could have cleaned out that closet and went ahead and cooked dinner and had the evening free. That, so that, that just does not work. Yeah, indecisiveness anybody. is right next to double-mindedness. So how do we take no thought for our life? How do we take no thought for tomorrow? How do we do that? Some people say this, Alexis, and you've heard this. Well, I'm just a worrier. I, I can't help Wait, it. It's human nature. It's, it's human just nature. human nature. And my mama worried, and my daddy worried, mm -hmm. and my grandmama worried, and so I'm just a worrier. As if that is a spiritual or something. Well, like, it doesn't matter. It is it's, spiritual. Oh, it's wrong spirit. It's demonically it's, charged. That's spirit. correct. I'm going to tell you what, when, when pe and I don't hear that much anymore because people know not to say that to yeah, me. They, they would have they to not of, know me to yeah, say that's that. Yeah, that's me too. They have to not know Because when I hear, when I hear um, I, I'm only human, it's just human nature. It's like, and where's God in that scenario? Because if it is, ready? No longer I who live, I'm dead. I'm dead. It's Christ who lives in me. Because I'm just... I just think that should just be our motto, which is no longer I who live. Because most people within the body of Christ who call themselves Christians, who believe, who are, probably are, I mean, they probably are born again. Again, that's escape from hell. That's step one. But when we really want to grow up in Christ, this whole thing in Matthew 6, 25 through 34, it's about the mind. It is. Where is your mind? Where's and your when thoughts? we begin to grow in Christ, and we say, Father, I just put my best foot forward. I want to hear you, see you, and have you move through me. I want your spirit to overtake me. Well, you can use whatever words you want, but when that is your heart, when you're saying, I don't want to just be, uh, you know, have uh, escape from hell, that's great, but that's not even what any of this is about. That's, that's not, secondary. That's not what Third. Jesus said for us to see. Well, that's exactly right. He didn't say seek a way to escape hell. Seek first his kingdom. Right. And, and so when we get our minds on the king, this was revelatory to me. And I know because we talked about this when we read uh, Miles, Monroe, Miles Monroe's book, uh, uh, um, Rediscovering the Kingdom. And you read one of his other ones. I don't know. But kingdom Principles. Kingdom Principles. Oh, my gosh. And they're really close in the same thing. But, oh, my gosh, that was like revelatory. It's like when I seek first God's kingdom. In other words, that's where my mind is all the time. And I'm telling you, from the time I get up in the morning until the time I go to bed at night, my mind is on the kingdom of heaven. I can be washing dishes, as you say. I can, you know, go about and take care of my kids or, you know, whatever I need to do, take care of my husband or the house or whatever. My mind is still on the kingdom of heaven. Absolutely. My mind never leaves the kingdom of heaven, which is different than religion. Religion says, go be a good church person. Mm -hmm. Go be a good Christian person and the do's and the don'ts. But that doesn't mean your mind is always on Christ. You know, every now and then when there's an opportunity to do something good, you may or may not think about, oh, I might want to do something good. Kingdom mindedness says my mind is stayed, what is it, set your face like flint. Yes. Do not turn to the right or to the left. When my head starts turning away from God, it's because I'm thinking, I'm distracted by self. Right. Self gets in the way. When I really start dwelling, it's just like when, when uh, the Apostle Paul said, um, Impossible. Impossible. <laughs> uh, putting behind you. 
Uh, okay. Forgetting those things behind you. Forgetting the what lies behind. Right. It's so it, that's about the mind. It's all about the mind. I'm, I'm sorry. I just am having revelation these last few days. It's just yes. like like a, a new level of understanding that everything about this is about where is your mind, where is that's your right. heart, where is your spirit, and it starts with the mind pulling down imaginations and strongholds and every high thing. And and I love that because I, I like to see a little lasso and I go. But in my mind, and I go, mm, that's not right. And I pull that thing down, and I get, I'm going to say yank it out my nose, right? Yeah. I'm just going to yank it out or yank it out of my ear. And it's silly. She's but so when, sophisticated. I know, right? So eloquent. But when you really can visualize, okay, there are things in our mind that do not align with do not the kingdom of there. God. And so when the Lord says, take every thought captive, I'm going to take it captive. I'm going to lasso it. I'm going to steer that thing and I'm going to pull it out and say now Father replace that with the kingdom of heaven What? let your thoughts be my thoughts let your mind be my mind right and, yes. so, and so all of this is about not dwelling on the past not dwelling on me in the present not dwelling on me in the future but dwelling on Christ who encompasses all in all yeah. you know people will say well does the kingdom of God mean replacing everything with the kingdom of God you know, there's a there's a, a list of laws, if you will, that we this body, this human body, cannot go without water for very long. Now you go without food for a lot longer, we just don't like to. But this body will only last three days tops for the normal uh, of going without water and your body begins to shut down. And so we know we have to have water. We know we have to have food. We know we have to have some type of clothing for our body or shelter of some sort. Those are laws of life, so to speak. Um, and yet, God said before you think about any of these things, seek first the kingdom. What does that mean? It means what is God's governing laws? That's what we're to seek out. And it will always lead to righteousness. We forget that part. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness because mm -hmm. everything concerning the kingdom will bring forth righteousness. righteousness and you know what that word means right standing with God mm -hmm. so before you seek out water and food and all these other things we need to seek the kingdom and then he gives us a promise in verse 33 then he says and all these things all what things all the things that's Everything talked we about need. in Matthew 6 food water raiment for your body and a housing and all these things well either he really meant that or he's sort of a jokester or maybe just have hardly says these things I just don't believe God's that frou-frou people are frou-frou God is not frou-frou if he said it he meant it but there's governing laws mm -hmm. and I know we've done a lot of laying foundation right here because we're going to talk about the mind because if the mind is not changed nothing in your life will change. When you became born again, your spirit man came awake to God. So that's just a simple way to put it. it. It woke up to the presence of God. And God put himself in, that, in our inner man, in our spirit man, and he sealed it with the Holy Spirit. That's pretty good news, folks. But even that does not change our behaviors. <clears throat> now, it might influence it. From, from there but he gives us the mandate in Romans 1 to be transformed by the renewing of our mind now we won't have time to really get into this we'll catch it up next week but I want to say something here your old self is not subject to the likeness of God in Ephesians 4 22 I'm going to read it that in reference to your former manner of life, you lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lust of deceit, and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and holiness mm. of the truth. So we have to renew the spirit of our minds Romans 12, 1, we all know this scripture, but I don't think sometimes we really, really get what it's telling us to do. So, Romans 12, 
start in verse 1. Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, not through your own self-reliance, through the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice. Listen, if you are still trying to make your body do what you're willing it to do by your own self-fixing and self-reliance and self-doing it, you're just going to fail, 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 fail. And I'm sorry I know that because I have failed, 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 yep. failed. You'll wear yourself out trying. Mm -hmm. Acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. You know, when you're in church or with a group and you are in worship, that is about <clears throat> exalting God as God, the supreme being. When you're praising Him, you're thanking Him for the things He's done. Okay? So worship, it says, is to present your body a living and holy sacrifice. Okay, can I just say, a.k.a. Okay. Obedience, obedience is true worship. Continue. Obedience That's is what true that worship. Means. That's, That's my right. translation. And do not be conformed to this world. What does he mean by this world? He means the systems of this world, the cultures. We're not supposed to take on the cultures of, the, of our, our, our nation or our people groups or our belief systems and those things. We are to be transformed. But it says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is. How many of you want to know the will of God? Well, what am I supposed to do today? What's the will of God? Well, you start transforming that mind. You start renewing your mind. You're going to be transformed. Being born again transforms our spirit. It brings our spirit from death to life. Mm -hmm. Right? But by renewing our minds, everything else starts being transformed. It starts being changed. The old that's man a daily starts leaving. Renewal. It is a daily renewal and a daily growing so that you may prove what the will of God is, which is good and acceptable and perfect. You want to know God's will. It is for you to be good. Good as He sees good, not good as we see good. Acceptable to Him and perfect in Him. That is God's will. Well, how in the world are we going to how in the world do we obtain that? Well, we're going to have time. We're going to tell next you week. next week. <laughs> yeah, wow. Today just went so fast. Listen, if you have just tuned in, you are listening to Better Together, Two Girls in a Bible with Alexis B. Wolf. That's me, Sandy Renner. That's her. We are both published authors and ministers. And uh, we we purpose to bring the living word to everyday life because we yes. want to help you understand how to take this and apply it to everyday life. Um, if you are interested in any of our books, um, I actually talk a lot about the mind in my prayer book called Under, Under if you can see that, Understanding Kingdom Prayer. It's pretty big. It has like a hundred and, I don't know, 10 or 15 template prayers. But a wrap, wrapped around those prayers are lots of commentary. There's a whole big section on the mind. And I barely yes. even scraped the surface. Sandy's newest book is, is her autobiography called Stories, A Woman's Journey of Becoming Imperfectly Perfect. It is an amazing, astounding book full of 112 short stories about her life, how God has moved in her. It is truly a book of faith that her life is God-honoring. So if you really want to go, oh, whoa, what? <laughs> These are some whoa, what the... Uh, stories because it's just amazing. I mean, she tells. I mean, there's like supernatural stuff. There's how uh, to seek the kingdom. How to seek the kingdom. Mess ups, failures, and um, successes, and how God yes. really continues to transform her. Excellent book. Uh, my autobiography is my latest book called Gaucho's God and Great Expectations. All these are available on Amazon.com. This talks about my journey over the last 53 years and how we got here. How we got here. So listen, uh, to, we, we have a brand new episode every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. It airs Eastern Standard Time. It airs on YouTube. We place it on Facebook mm -hmm. and, if I remember, on Instagram, although I rarely remember, so don't go to Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, don't, de you don't guys, depend on Instagram. <laughs> don't depend. On you guys be blessed. We thank you for listening. If you have questions or comments, please reach out to us. You can go to our website. Everything will be at the end of this video, so you don't have to like write it down. And you guys be blessed. We'll see you next week. Shalom.